again, just back to history, Gandhi. Like, it's like, what is the Mahatma doing? Are we going to march? Oh, we got a telegram from him. It says, <laughs> I'm in my own space because that last meeting was like totally not okay. Making me rethink things. Colonialism bad, but the toxic behavior of the movement makes me rethink the British Empire, maybe. <laughs> anyway, I don't really have the emotional stamina to deal with this. Sign the Mahatma. <laughs> right. <laughs> I need some space right now. Yeah. Like, this is I, Nelson Mandela, from <laughs> Robben Island. I'm going to need a great deal of space right now. <laughs> <laughs> The way Steve Biko spoke about me at the meeting, I don't know if we can do rebel operations in Mozambique until I have 10 months of self-care. <laughs> By the way, P.T. Botha has invited me to sit on an oversight board. And if the violent rhetoric of the ANC towards me in that meeting is of any consequence, maybe we should have an apartheid regime. I yeah. don't owe you nothing. I don't owe you anything. <laughs> It's also like great again. I love that. That's even better. He spent 27 years in prison and didn't come out and go, fuck all you people. I, lo I love it. I was right. like, the people who actually could say that were like, I had to build friendships with my prisoners and negotiate with the people who murdered my comrades. And now I will be president of a rainbow nation. And there's like, Meanwhile, back in America, those tweets mean you don't get health care. That's a fundament, <laughs> fundamental difference in character. That's just character, right. straight up. It's just like, it's like, and even, I'm sorry to say, I know it will trigger people, not in this audience, but in people watching. Even Bernie. Bernie no one, no one, uh, Elizabeth Warren's whole campaign is is a record campaign on him. And, and she, and we, and we all know that. And even like behind, guys, I'm telling you, like behind plays. And by the way, this is not a critique on Warren. It's just a critique on Bernie. His campaign is soft as hell. They didn't call up reporters and pitch negative stories about Warren and say, actually, she was a corporate lawyer. You're supposed to do all that. I know the people and we're in like fantasy unity land. That's called running a campaign. Warren was doing that from the beginning. The stuff that people got all pissed off about in the last couple of weeks when she finally said that Bernie was ineffective, they had been doing that shit for the whole fucking campaign because they were running against him. That's how it works. And we all know that even if she was able to sink him, that Bernie would not, Bernie would endorse Elizabeth Warren in 30 seconds. Right. You could not picture Bernie Sanders sitting on MSNBC being like, I don't know. I thought the tweets were racist. I have to go do self care at Burlington. You know, and like, let alone, you know, like, it's like some, like Ben Cohen writes a column for the New York Times. Like, this this was at the core of the Jewish psyche. So I don't know what we could do. This would never happen. So it, it's just, and, and the excuses for why it's happening are usually always actually profoundly sexist and paternalistic. Like a fucking United States Senator Ivy League professor. It's like, <gasps> porcelain campaigned in Massachusetts. So it's honestly like an insult to women, like objectively. Anyways, whatever. People are fucking pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't owe you anything. I, Nelson Mandela, need self-care. <laughs> you know, wait, what's the other one? It's like, it's like he gets like, the, like, Thank you for the communication, Govard and Becky. Thanks so much for reaching out. I'm really not in a space to deal with planning guerrilla operations <laughs> against the apartheid regime. Right I'm going to read this one. In <laughs> I'm going to go to Dubai for a week <laughs> just to, you know, hop in a jacuzzi and just decompress. I'll be, I'll, I'll get right back to you, man. That dude, that sounds way more honorable. <laughs> That's so much more honorable. Read this one in Nelson Mandela. Okay. This is uh, Amber Tamlin is uh, Nelson Mandela, by the way, is no longer right wing. He is now a Warrenite. Yeah. <laughs> To the people who fought for Elizabeth Warren, and most especially women and young girls out there, a reminder, you owe no one anything right now. And I'm going to put in parentheses, 
Step over homeless people on the street. <laughs> people who are dying because they can't have insulin shots can kiss your ass. Ew. People overseas who are victims of military coups and cluster bombs can just sit down. And my riff. And now back to this actually insane narcissistic tweet. Allow yourself space to grieve. Be angry and be numb. Take time. Take all the time you need because there's certainly no time pressing issues that we are dealing with. <laughs> there's not like major timelines that we are facing. Now that being said, if I am some type of, I don't even know, but I'm assuming some type of like millionaire sketch comedian from some time, I guess there is a lot of time. If the extent of my worries is scraping a Prius in Silver Lake, or justifying to my wife, to myself, hiring illegal immigrants that I underpay while still wanting to pretend that I'm a great advocate of workers. I guess that is a lot of time. The second thing was a joke. I don't know if Amber Tamlin does that, but I would be profoundly unsurprised. All right, we really have to do this. We're just doing a tour of to. just like this <laughs> grotesque behavior of these people right now. Let's do one more. Okay, all right. This is Charlotte Clymer. Let's get this right out of the way now. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren and her team won't hold the either remaining team campaign a damn thing. They put out an extraordinary comprehensive platform, brilliantly articulated a deep vision, and took out Bloomberg. They deserve space in their time. Let's you're, just uh, you're on their time. You're on their time. <laughs> I like that. Like I'm that. on Elizabeth Warren's time. Yeah, apparently. it was like tell it's like some kid like drowning in the Maldives. It's just like, like, come please, can we have help? It's like, ah, oh, you're on Elizabeth Warren's time. <laughs> it's like, hey, I just worked my third shift at an Amazon warehouse before I go drive Lyft and I can't afford my kids inhaler. Excuse me, could you stop being so violent with your speech? <laughs> I'm numb right now. <laughs> I'm feeling numb. I'm feeling numb. <laughs> It's like, well, Comrade Mandela, we must move now, or the apartheid forces will amass themselves. I am not on your time. You are trying to command our vote, and <laughs> you, you will only lose your most support. <laughs> you will only lose your most support. <laughs> a lot of people were very rude to me, and now there's going to be a very long apartheid ahead. I don't know who needs to hear this. I don't but know. But Warren doesn't know, oh, Bernie, a goddamn thing. <laughs> I don't know who in the African National Congress needs to hear this, but I don't owe you a goddamn thing to end apartheid. Now, I am going to eat chocolates. <laughs> Not a good look, guys. Not a good look. Wow. So I'm supposed to come out and help lead to an equal democracy in our country. Yikes. Looks like somebody is monopolizing my lived experience. Yep, if you run a political campaign and uh, you, as an example, profited off of the currency of a, of a disabled uh, single-payer advocate who is staking literally his personal life on getting that accomplished and has flipped to Sanders, yeah, you kind of owe him something. I don't know. Like, if you know, if, if Elizabeth Warren and her husband, uh, you know, get a divorce or something, I am going to just put out that uh, she does not owe us anything, and she should take time for self care. Uh, for a presidential election determining the fate of the globe uh, and a major player in it, yeah, she owes people something. She Sorry, owes, uh, everybody who like was actually supportive of Medicare for all or abolish ICE, which she <laughs> she was actually an abolish ICE person way back when. Um, <laughs> that like three months in. Or that was actually what I love is that it was like it's so clear when you look at her campaign that she just had like millennial woke people just like writing bullshit she didn't even care about and she was just like and that's why we're gonna say go girl because blah 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 and then like the ice one was i mean i could be totally wrong but the ice one was really funny because she was totally in abolish ice and then she was at a forum and it was almost like it hit on her like what the fuck are these people she's like no we don't what there's drug dealers <laughs> fuck that noise <laughs> You better go write some some tweet about how I, you know, I thought uh, Moonlight was an incredible movie or something. But we need ice. <laughs> <laughs> Stop fucking around. Why is that old Shylock still ahead of me? <laughs> Daddy called him Shylocks. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.